Wasabi, you guys. Welcome to Integration B Training for Advanced. This is part 15, and we're going to be talking about Borwine integrals. So, what on earth is a Borwine integral? So, we know that from 0 to pi, sine of x over x, this is pi over 2. Okay? However, if we go another x over 3, sticking with odd integers, this integral is also pi over 2. And if we go again, x to the power of 5, x over 5, this integral still equals to pi over 2. And then if we go again, x to the power of 7, x to the power of 7, also pi over 2. And it keeps on going, it keeps on going until it stops at sine over x over 13. And so here at x over 13, we get pi over 2. But anywhere anywhere past that, it's, it doesn't equal pi over 2 anymore. It equals something else. So, no more than 13. Okay? So this this strange phenomenon, we call it Borwine integral, okay? And I think there's like a crazier one where it's like if you add two cosine of x and then you keep going with sine of x over x and then what that does it, for some reason it expands it. I think they said what it was um, x 111, I think. I could be wrong, I don't remember, I don't remember, but it, it expands it further. But we're not going to look into this, we're just going to look into this basic property here, just this Borwin integral, okay? So we have this integral here, and it looks like a Fulani integral, but I don't think you can do that because the functions don't seem to converge when you take the limit from infinity. So, so we definitely can't use... Uh, Fulani. So what do we do? This, this seems like a trig identity that we can combine. Seems like a because it's cosine minus cosine. Uh, it could be you know in terms of sine sine, but in in what format do we combine it as? Uh, we could use Borwein integral, right? So we have technically x and x over three. Right, which definitely fits x minus x over 3 or x plus x over 3, which fits these constants. So what we have is we have 2 from 0 to infinity sine of x sine of x over 3 x squared. So now what? We use Borwein integral. We just use the uh, the formula from Borwein integral, right? Now be careful, you think answer, oh, okay, is 2 times pi over 2. No, that is incorrect. Because we need, according to Borwein, if you remember uh, the Borwein integral, not only you just need sine of x, we also need the constant as well at the bottom. So if this is sine of x over 3, you also need that 3 at the bottom. So because of that, we actually need uh, x over 3 here, uh, divide by 3, technically. So, because of that, our actual answer by Borwein uh, integral, we have 2 thirds, uh, this doesn't actually correlate, but this here, we have 2 thirds times, then you have pi over 2. And so now our answer is pi over 3. So this integral here is equal to pi over 3. Okay. So just knowing the information of Borwein integrals can also be a very helpful as well. Okay. Rather than doing, I don't know, some Feynman or some nasty trick, uh, whatever. Just use the knowledge of Borwein integrals. All right, we just have a straight up pure trig integral here. What do we do? Do we do? Do we just use trig identities or uh, use 
dredge the integral and spam it, or what? What do we do? We just stick with Borwein integrals. Just say, oh, okay, this is a Borwein integral. It uses odd numbers, and you know, it's reciprocated. Oh, pi over two. Done. Right? Wrong. No, this is not pi over two. Okay. Be very, very careful. Okay, it's not just x times x times x for these three. Okay, you seriously need the three here and the five here. Okay, it's very common that you you could tend to miss this. <laughs> okay, especially when you're going very fast, you'll forget. Oh crap! I forgot these constants. So do not forget these. So then we have a fifteen at the bottom because these are reciprocated. So now our answer, our actual answer, is 1 over 15 pi over 2. So this integral equals pi over 30. Okay? Do not forget these constants. You need that. That satisfies with the Borwein integral. Okay? All right. Next integral. Don't freak out. Let's not freak out. What is going on here? So, of course, we can't just solve it and be confident like, oh, okay, I know how to solve it. No, we don't even know what's going on. So, let's go ahead and see what on earth is going on here. So, we have a pi product. So, this seems like, okay, if we let n equals to 1, we just get sine of x over x, right? If we plug in 1, we just take 1 for k. Okay, and that's it. All right, plus and then n equals to two. For n equals to two, we go from k equal to one to k equal to two. Okay, so we have sine of x of x, sine of x over, and then plug in two now. Three uh, x over three. Ah, oh, and then it keeps on adding up until at seven. And so we go, we keep going at sine of x over, see if we plug in 7, we get 13. Oh, that's what's going on. Dot, 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 whatever. I don't, it's, it's a long, it's a very long integral. But I get, I, I see what's going on now. Okay, so this is pi over 2 plus this other Borowine integral is pi over 2. Then the other else is going to be plus pi over 2, and then plus pi over 2, and then plus pi over 2, until we reach, uh, until we reach to like 7th term. Okay, so our answer is just 7 times pi over 2. Okay, 7 pi over 2, that's literally our answer. Okay, so again, don't be intimidated, right? If you see some wacky stuff like this, uh, Try to figure out what is going on. If you need to, just separate it. I know it looks, you'll feel lazy and unmotivated to separate it, but it's actually very helpful because it, you know, it gives you a different perspective on what is actually going on in this problem. Okay? All right, let's go to the next integral. Ooh, this looks a little fancy now. So, if we do the inversion, or I'll just let u equal 1 over x, we get sine of u, then sine of u over 3 du, but we also get u squared. Okay, well now what? It's the exact same thing like before from the first integral, right? We just need a divide 3 times 3, right? Now this satisfies the Borwein, uh, the Borwein integral. So we get one third pi over two. The answer is pi over six. Okay, we didn't have to do Feynman technique. We didn't have to do anything ugly. We just go use the knowledge of Borwein integral. Oh my God, what is this monstrosity? Don't freak out. Don't freak out. Okay, we. I immediately notice we could. Definitely use a trig identity to simplify whatever this is. 
All right? So let's go ahead and do that. So let's just start with that. Just kind of break it and just break it apart to something much nicer. So x to one. Let's see with uh, the sine law. It seems like we are dealing with um, x minus this. Uh, one minus two n over two n plus one. Two n plus one minus two n. Oh, x over two n plus one. That's all this is. Okay. Well, dx. Um, okay, but where, where, do, where does this lead to? What now? Again, if you don't know where this is going, let's go ahead and break this apart so that we understand what is going on. Okay, so let's go ahead and break this apart. Now, what on earth is exactly going on? So we'll start with n equals to 1, okay? When n equals to 1, we get sine of x over 3, okay? When n equals to 1, we get x, we end up with x uh, negative 1, okay? That's weird, but okay. And then we have sine of, and then we let n equal to 2, x over 5, x to the power of 5, x negative 5, okay, huh, interesting, oh, I'm sorry, I'm, uh, I don't know why, not, not 5, uh, n equals to 2, I'm sorry, so x squared, so that's positive, and then sine x over 3, not sine x over 3, sine x, uh, for n equals to 3, we get 7, and then negative 3, and then it's going to keep on going until we stop at what, at 6, so x, sine of x over uh, c6 is 12, 13. Okay, and then we have x to the power of 6. Wow. Okay, but can we even trust this? Is, is this even a, a Borwein integral? Right? Well, I mean, it's quite suspicious why they would have an x to the power of 4. So there, there must be something uh, that should cancel out. Right? So sine of x, yes. 1, 2, 3, 4 all the way up to like 7. So we need x to the power of 7 at the bottom. Okay. But does it actually add up? So we have 2 minus 1 plus 4 minus 3 plus uh, 6 minus... Wait, wait. 2, negative 3, 4. Then I need negative 5, 6. Okay. So this adds up to 3. Ah, oh, plus 4, 7. Okay, yeah. So this does add up becoming a, um, a Borwein integral. So what we have, what we have now is that we end up having sine of x, sine of x over 3, all the way to sine over x over 13, x to the power of 7, exactly what we need. Okay? Awesome. So what does this equal? Pi over 2? No, it does not. Okay? Because we still need the constants here. Right? So we need a divide by 3, uh, a divide by 5, a divide by 7, a divide by 9, okay? 11 and 13. Okay, so what we have here is that this is equal to pi over 2 times uh, 1 third, 1 fifth, all the way to 1 13. And I think you can simply write this, you can simply write this as pi over 2 
1 over 13 double factorial. That's technically what this is. Okay? It is a double factorial. All right. That's about it. That's the Borwein integral. So it's just another nice formula just to get around ugly integrals. So whenever you have something similar, you could format it into a Borwein integral. Perfect. And take advantage of that. Just be very careful to not miss that you need these constants here. You need these constants here in order to satisfy the Borwein integral. Okay? But other than that, uh, it's, it's, this is a good formula to just keep at the back of your mind. Okay? All right. That's about it for this section. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next part.